winning his first event, and from that day on, all Rex wanted to do was race, becoming a pro motocrosser in Southern California at age 16. Rex was an actually strong and gifted athlete who augmented his riding skills with physical training and hours of ride time and practice. Throughout his career, Rex would never lose a race because he got tired. Rather, he would outlast the competition and outperform his own motorcycles. He kept racing riding so hard that he often broke the fragile machines of that era. Cycle News dubbed him the Rocket for his exploits at local California motocross tracks. He was fast. He was noticed. Rex rode Mako's and CZ's before being picked up by Honda in 1974. Riding the Honda Elsinore, he won the opening moto at Daytona. The first turn crash in the second moto cost him the overall. State won a lot of first motos and garnered a few podiums. Honda was pleased with Rex's speed and aggressive riding style. They built him a fast open bike. In 1974, he won the 500 class at the LA Coliseum on the Honda. Injury stalled Rex's career for a bit, and Honda dropped him in 1975. He continued to ride as a privateer on a CZ. Riding the CZ at the LA Coliseum that year, Rex Ando, while leading, was wow. featured on the Rex TV television spectacular fashion. To his many fans, Rex is iconic as one of the factory Harley Davidson motocross team riders. The Harley Rider came in 1976. Still today, fans of the time recall the orange rocket out front as Rex rode the wheels off the Harley MXers. Rex was able to put the Harley on the podium in Unadilla with second overall in the 500 class. It was his best finish on the orange machine in MX Nationals. He finished eighth in points in the 500 Motocross National Championship that year. In 78, Rex was on Yamaha, where he would stay for several seasons. Yamaha was good, strong enough to survive two full motos under Rex. He started winning, he won the 250 Supercross class at Daytona in 1980. He was on his way to one of the best seasons yet, then he injured his shoulder and had to sit out the rest of the year. In 1981, Rex accepted a deal to race in Australia, where he often won several classes every weekend. Then he went to South Africa from 82 to 85, dominated the sport, and inspired future world champions like Greg Albertine to race motocross. Rex returned to the USA and considered retiring from motocross, then he entered the VEP World Championship on a bike run to him by Eddie Lawson, and he won. He became a regular at the Big Bad events and contingency races. By 1993, he was doing off-road and desert events with Team Green while running a little shop called Rocket Rex Racing. Rex garnered several class wins in off-road racing in the Baja 1000 and 500. He did that all the way up to 2000 when he decided to retire from professional racing and enjoy riding just for fun. Today, Rex is a successful plumber in Southern California. Rex Dayton turned pro at 16 and continued to race professionally until he was 46. It's been an amazing career with over 2,000 professional wins on three continents. And the name, Rocket Rex, still resonates in a sport as a metaphor for pit bull determination and a fierce will to win. The Trailblazers proudly welcome Rocket Rex Dayton. Oh, the 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 I don't have my papers in my hand this time. Come on. I got scared talking to you last night. I got nervous. I'm sweating. I said, throw that damn paper out of here. This scared old. This is a real party tribe. Still 14 years old today. But we're here about Mark Rex. And he asked me if I would speak some words for him. And I said, I'd love to. How do you describe Rocket Rex? Mm. If you know anything about Rocket Rex, you don't have a little bit, but you have a lot that you can talk about. <laughs> we won't go there, right? 
I've been racing with this gentleman since 1970. When I first heard about this rocket man, he's a skinny, tough, could just, he could eat a whole bowl if he wanted. He was mean. And it scared me. And the other riders are saying, hey, look at, who's this rocket Rex kid? So we got to meet through the years and learned about him. And what sticks out to you on rocket is, uh, he earned everything he had. He wasn't rich. His father helped him. And it was kind of like our thing too. If we didn't work hard and make things last, work on the machineries, you know, it wasn't just given to us. And so I identified with Rex quite a bit. This man went through a lot of hard times. He was not unapproachable with people work. But we were terrified of Rex. <laughs> because he not only did his walking and talking on the track, he proved it. And he was stuff as they come. And I'm going to tell two small stories about Rex, which stands out in my head the most. Carl's back, yeah. an epic bio. Yeah. John DeSoto and his prime. You know John, De John DeSoto. This man today at 70 can do 100 push ups. Imagine 1970, 69, 71. Rex and John did a battle, it was epic. And we were on the sidelines getting to watch this. He's chasing John the solo down. It's getting to the end of Carl's bed. And on the downhill, which we call the freeway, Rex thought he'd make a move on John. And he overshot and hit John so hard I couldn't believe it. John didn't fall. Rex managed to go off and win the race. Oh, I'm sorry, back up. Same moment as the last photo. There's two laps to go. John was really could see his face. He was mad. And I go, oh my God, something's really going to happen down here. And there he goes. He's chasing Rex. Rex is going like a mad man. They get down <laughs> to the bottom of the freeway again. And in those days, he used to go all the way straight down to the right hand turn before the drop off to the finish line. John DeSoto, all he did was upshift that bike, and he never went off the throttle. And we were standing, and I go, Rex is going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Rex started making his turn, and John DeSoto's spear hit him like a D4 dozer. Rex and his bike went into the chain link fence, and I swear, you could look at it, and we thought we were going to have to peel him out of the fence. The soda went on the web, but I truly thought that Rex was dead. I said, he's got to be dead. He's so tough, he gets up off the fence, the bike's broken, and uh, he didn't die, he went on to live and battle again. Last quick story, Saddleback Park, he passes a kid in the race, the father doesn't like the pass. Yeah. Yeah. Finish line's done, Rex wins the race, and he pulls off the track. This man, this rider's dad had a 24 inch crescent wrench. <laughs> Wham! Hits Rex right across his face. I was standing there, blood pouring out, and I see him still putting along. He didn't fall off his bike. He kept riding to his bed. An average man would have died, broken teeth. It was a mess. He was bloody. Well, if you ever met Rex Staten's dad, that was one man you did not want to piss off. <laughs> so I was thinking. We gotta go see this. <laughs> well, he did then well. Rick Staten's dad went over there and pulverized this court. <laughs> Ryder's dad. And um, so all the stories you heard of how tough this gentleman was on the bike, they didn't get any tougher than this man. He worked for it hard. He got there, he wrote crap sometimes. He made it look good. And he's one of the true guys 
that went out and won with what he had. Even when they were not thinking he could win. And we've spent many years traveling together. We won't talk about those stories. <laughs> but I'm honored to say you're alive. We've been such good friends, along with so many other motocrossers at our time. And congratulations, we actually deserve this. Thank you. shut it off until you come to me. I'm thinking, Dad, I'm going to make the corner. I says, why don't you try that? He hit me and knocked me off my bike. And he goes, hey, you want me to teach you? Just shut up and listen. And I was like, yes, sir. And next thing I know, I just went wide open. I said, I'm going to crash. There's no way I can make this corner. And I did it and I made it. And he says, see, what did I tell you? You can do it. I'm like, all right. And every time I go racing, my dad says, you there to race? Okay, you're not there to play. Everybody would come up to my house and I would want to go trail ride. I can't trail ride. I'm full bore, racing, whatever. They're like, this is no fun. You All you want to do is take off. I'm like, that's how I'm raised that way. You know, my dad told me, there's no bullshit. You race or you go home. That's the way I want it. And I just want to thank everybody. You have said before, and nobody has been able to disprove you, that you've won more motocross races in America than any other American. Yeah, Larry, I looked it all up and everything. I have 2016 professional wins in my career of 30 years. Woo! I won in South Africa, and I would like to teach motocross schools and that in South Africa. And the trade and the motorcycle industry has been great to me. And I want to thank my wife because she had to put up with a lot of shit. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody from our tribes, all my teammates. We had a great time. Uh, I would never, I, I, I would do it again if I had to. I hurt like hell. You know, I got titanium knees, chrome all the hips. I'm kind of double jointed. <laughs> I broke my hand, and I had to pull my dog off my other dog because my dogs were trying to kill my dog. I fell back and broke my skateboard two nights ago. I was going to wear a cast, and I said, no, I ain't going to wear a cast. You're going to take the race off. What do you want to do? I got my dog and pull it off. And I'm trying to pick up two dogs at once. Gene, Gene Woods is here tonight. He promoted it at uh, Victorville Speedway. We talked to him and asked, I'm going to be here announcing the rights of being inducted. He says, I'll never forget that jump that you made at Victorville Speedway. I don't know how many cars you went, whatever you went over, but it was incredible. Remember that? Yeah, we I had to hit the ramp, actually go through that chain link fence in the dark, through that belly, over the jump, into a bunch of lights, and I jumped 16 cars, and I had about probably 50 feet to stop, and then I landed, and it was kind of wet. And I, when I landed, I landed and hit a sprinkler box with a foot peg when the bike bottomed up. It kicked me sideways. I hit between turn one, turn two of the speedway track, face first, shattered my helmet. I slid up, my bike hit the wall, came down, landed on my back. I came out, and there he was there. He goes, hey, how are you? I said, I'm great. I got all my gear on. <laughs> really, I had a hit toe on my elbow, tore my, tore my big toenail off. And, uh, I'm great. <laughs> Okay, and I've been my hero ever since, and I love him to death. All right! Woo!